material provided by nature and a few simple tools are used with great skill to provide traditional and attractive ornaments of the English landscape. Almost certainly established before the Norman conquest, the craft of thatching has changed little since the Middle Ages. This, together with the fact that it is now not so widespread, accounts for it having a fascination entirely its own. Working with his weight balanced between knees and feet, this thatcher, Bernard Toesland, is casing, or laying a new coat over the old long straw, which he thatched 18 years earlier. This job will take about a fortnight to complete. There are three types of thatch, long straw, combed wheat reed and Norfolk reed. This new coat is wheat or Devon reed, which gives a brush-like texture. A comparison of the ears with those of the old shows the protective efficiency of thatch. Many tools are handmade to the thatcher's requirements and consist of such things as leggets, spar hooks, and a variety of cutting tools. A knife about 200 years old has been handed down from father to son. Bernard makes his own leather palm protectors, one of which will last about 18 months. One of the first jobs is to prepare spars from gads, or branches, of nut hazel which weathers extremely well. The gad is split with the aid of a spar hook into triangular shaped sections. These are then sharpened each end and twisted by hand to give them the form of springy staples. In different parts of the country, they are known as pegs or goosenecks, and some are kept in water for use the following day. Bundles of reed known as bottles are carried to the roof where they are held in what is known as a nave. The smaller bundles, which are skillfully applied, are known as yelms, and each yelm is pegged into position. A wooden legate is being used here for dressing the thatch, but generally Bernard uses his hand. The ability to feel the thatch usually makes for a better job. The yelms are laid in courses or stulches, about two feet wide running from eave to ridge, and which require about 140 pegs. The average length of a course is 18 feet. As the work progresses up to the roof ridge, a dolly or roll of reed is prepared by the apprentice Martin. This consists of bundles of reed, tied around the required length of nut hazel.
This is pegged along the apex of the roof in order that the final finish will be a neat, clean, sharp ridge. The last yelms of the course are laid and pegged with the final yelm standing proud until work on the other side begins. The ridge runners can clearly be seen. Working from right to left, each stulch is trimmed and finished before progressing to the next. Skill and experience is required to blend the stulches together to give a neat finish. These bands or runners are applied as each stulch is laid, as are those near the top. Here the pegs are driven in at a slight upward angle with the points deliberately misaligned to prevent rain penetrating. Weather-wise, wind is the thatcher's greatest enemy. round and well pegged. When working on the other side of the roof, the procedure is the same until the ridge is reached. The topmost yelms are pegged to the dolly or roll and the proud reeds pegged over and runners applied to give a neat finish. Logically, the final course is laid before the penultimate one in order to make fixing off more easy and comfortable for the thatcher. thatching proper has been completed. The new roof must be protected by covering it with wire. But Bernard and Martin have a well-earned tea break and a chat before beginning this final phase. Lengths of the wire are measured and cut and attached at the ridge with spars and galvanised pegs. Using a joiner made from an old screwdriver, the lengths are securely fixed together. Before fixing the lower end of the wire, Bernard dons a hat to keep dust and dirt off his head.
spars are used for fixing the wire under the eaves, where the wire is folded over to prevent birds building nests in the thatch. The beauty of the English countryside owes a lot of its appeal to the thatched cottages of a village or hamlet. Bernard Toesland is not only a thatcher providing warmth and protection to a home, but also an artist whose work can only add extra beauty to the country scene.